Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Exchange Pod, a podcast for faculty and by faculty. Today, members of the TLX have come together to talk about who we are, what we do, and how we can support you in your work at George Brown College. My name is Nikki Monahan, and I'm a faculty facilitator and faculty coach. In my role at the TLX, the Teaching and Learning Exchange, I support faculty through workshops, consultations, and coaching to achieve the highest levels of performance in the teaching and learning world. In formal sessions, I facilitate the new faculty academy for newly hired full-time faculty, and we work with understanding outcomes-based learning, principles of curriculum development, and how to become reflective practitioners. More informally, Faculty can drop by our TLX sites at Waterfront, Casa Loma, and St. James to talk about any challenges they may be facing in their classrooms. Maybe they're struggling with group work or want to come up with some more interesting or exciting or authentic assessments. Or maybe they're looking to find ways to increase levels of student engagement. These informal conversations could be something as simple as a half an hour uh, discussion or maybe more formal and ongoing consultations. Recently, I've started to provide coaching uh, with some of my colleagues in the TLX. And in coaching, it's a more formal contracted arrangement where faculty come together with a TLX coach to really address a particular area of performance. Uh, coaching's a, a collaborative kind of uh, relationship where a faculty member sets goals, and a coach works with them to collaborate, to create strategies to meet those goals and monitor progress. It's a great way to improve your performance and feel really great about the work that you're doing uh, in your classroom, kitchen, or lab. So that's me. I'm Nikki Monahan, faculty facilitator and faculty coach with the Teaching and Learning Exchange, which we call the TLX. So the rest of the team is with us today, so I'm going to hand it over to Lazarus Simeon. And Laz, could you just start by introducing yourself and what your role is in the TLX? Thank you, Nikki. Um, so I've worked in the Teaching and Learning Exchange uh, for about 10 years. Um, I started teaching here at the college uh, back in 1991, so that was a long time ago. It that, was. That was. Uh, I'd like to tell students that uh, it was the year before the Blue Jays won their first World Series, and they are both shocked that I am that old and that the Blue Jays actually won a World Series. <laughs> uh, and uh, but it was, you know, you think about it, it was the time before the internet and before cell phones. So all this kind of stuff has uh, impacted, uh, you know, our culture generally, and certainly what we do in the classrooms. Uh, back then, I was considered an innovator when I would roll a. TV set into the classroom with a VHS and, uh, you know, have the numbers written down, you know, the three, the, the, the dial number written down, oh, I got to stop, uh, play, uh, you know, fast forward it to 338 and play here. And then, so it was, uh, it was uh, quite a different uh, scenario. And the, back then, you know, it was, uh, it was expected that you got in, from, uh, in front of the class and you lectured for three hours and uh, you really can't do that anymore. So most of my work uh, is uh, now here in the TLX uh, is with uh, contract faculty. There's a lot of folks out there who uh, fall into that category, whether they're part-time, partial load, sessional. And um, I, what I do is I try to develop or connect them with all the work that we do, uh, connect them with other professional development opportunities. And um, a big part of my job is taken up with... Uh, um, offering the Contract Faculty Academy, um, which is a uh, six or seven week, I can't remember. It keeps changing. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, it, it keeps changing. Uh, uh, course that we look at, stuff like, you know, hmm, uh, active learning. We look at how assessments are designed. We look at lesson planning. Um, and really just kind of designed to give uh, faculty uh, who are really, in many, many cases, uh, subject matter experts and are real professionals in their, in their areas of expertise, um, uh, a bit of a background to teaching and learning, and, and uh, certainly teaching and learning the way that we do it here at the college. And um, so that's one thing that I do. And the other big part of what I do is I 
do some training on in, in uh, educational technology. I do, uh, you know, we look at stuff that can be used in the classroom to engage students, to connect students with content, to connect students with each other. Um, I do a lot of the uh, online teacher training as well. Uh, right now we're in the process of revamping one of the offerings that we provide. Uh, so there was a course that I taught, it was fully online, called uh, Designing Courses in the Online Environment. Um, it's We're going to change it up a little bit because, uh, you, know, you know, stuff changes. And uh, the the environment changes, the culture changes, and we're, we're thinking about uh, um, mixing it up a little bit. So those are the two big pieces that keep me busy. But, of course, you know, Nikki, I do stuff with you as well, uh, work with faculty, uh, uh, planning the instructional skills workshop mm-hmm. that we do every, uh, every semester. That's a three-day uh, workshop. Uh, that we run usually around the intercession, so the middle of the semester. And um, so that's, that takes a fair bit of planning. And then, of course, the three full days that we work uh, really closely with uh, groups of faculty to develop their instructional skills, introduce them to uh, the ISW format and uh, the rationale behind that. And thanks for mentioning that, because that's one of our favorite things to do together, the ISW, ISW, three intense full days where people teach in front of each other, get videotaped, and and watch themselves, and then get some feedback. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of the work that we do in uh, the teaching and learning exchange is in collaboration with others. So we collaborate amongst ourselves, and we collaborate with others. I'm wondering if you could also speak very briefly about your collaboration with Ravinder Brar, the Access an inclusion coach and your work on universal design for mm-hmm. learning or UDL. Absolutely. Uh, the ISW, just to get back to that, is one of those events where uh, as we lead up to, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, it's so much. And, but at the end of it, it's uh, one of those uh, one of those feelings that's just uh, really glad, glad that you took part in. Uh, everybody's really happy that, about it. It's a, it's a really rewarding experience and um and the so to get back to the udl that you were talking about so the universal design for learning is something that i was part of the pilot about two oh geez i guess about two three years ago that we started here uh and we explored the whole idea of udl and what kind of impact that it would have on teaching and learning here at the college and then i guess uh about a year or two ago uh, we hired a Ravinder Brar, who is uh, who works solely to promote and, and advocate and and uh, develop the whole uh, UDL piece here at the college. Um, so we work together. We do two workshops. Uh, we may be uh, expanding that to a third one. Uh, the first one is basically just an introduction to UDL, its key tenants, uh, what it kind of looks like in the classroom, why you know we do it, why it's you know uh, an approach that we're trying to get faculty considered Uh, and then the second one is more of an application so here's the principles how would you apply them in your particular uh, teaching context in your particular class Uh, what does it mean for your assessments what does it mean for how you engage students what does it mean for how you deliver content and um, so uh, it's it's uh, a fundamental kind of shift in in uh, the way a lot of people think about teaching and learning where you start out with a learning outcome and then you work towards developing uh, activities in the classroom or lecture formats or whatever, and then uh, there's some kind of assessment that takes place. Hopefully all of these three things are aligned and, and match up with each other. But with UDL, after you develop your learning outcomes or your learning goals, you kind of have to sit down and think about the barriers that you can uh, encounter when students uh, um, are in the classroom that may impede them from successfully achieving these goals. So that's that's a, a big difference in the way we approach uh, teaching and learning with UDL. That's one thing. I mean, I'm making it sound really simple, but there's there's a lot more going on there. But in a way, it is kind of simple. It really is a, an opportunity for teachers to really sit down and think about what they're doing and how they're doing things, right? And uh, if, if you're keen for, uh, you know, uh, reflecting on your own teaching practice, then you're a good candidate for adopting UDL. 
Terrific. Thanks so much, Laz. Thanks mm-hmm. for taking us down on a little trip down memory lane <laughs> and also uh, to get us thinking about how the TLX helps uh, people really deal with the uh, challenges and complexities of education in the 21st century. Uh, and technology is a big part of that. So I'd like to turn the microphone over to uh, Liz and ask her to uh, introduce herself and talk a little bit about her role and her work in the TLX. And thank you, Nikki. Uh, part of my role at the, at the TLX is um, to work as instructional designers. And my work involves working with faculty members to create meaningful and challenging online learning experiences. Um, my design work focus in, in teaching using real life problems. And the reason for using this approach is to help students work with problems and situations that they most likely encounter when they get into the workforce. Liz, thanks so much for bringing students to the forefront because at the TLX we primarily work with faculty, but we work with faculty so that they can have their learners have the best possible experience, whether in the classroom, in a kitchen, in a lab, or in online learning. And how do you support faculty members to uh, really develop rich online learning environments that that will help learners meet those uh, needs of 21st century workplace? That's a good question, Nikki. Actually, our faculty members are great content experts. Um, They have all that wealth of knowledge and experience. And what I do as instructional designer is to unpack that knowledge, that experience, and that the skills that they bring to George Brown in light of their course outcomes. And then we work with the um, experiential learning framework, problem-based learning, um, learning by doing, and we translate those um, outcomes into real life activities. The problems, the stories, they, they have them in the workplace. So we facilitate the creation of those stories. We create frameworks, we create templates to get that, to unpack that knowledge. That's fantastic. Thanks, Liz. I really appreciate that. And just in a few short sentences, what would you say is your favorite part about being an instructional designer with the TLX? I love being an instructional designer because you start with nothing just with an idea, and you end with a product. I am a quantitative person, and I like to count. I want to know how many courses I develop, the impact of those courses. I always uh, say that I like to be busy, Mm -hmm. but meaningful busy. Means I like to be busy when I am contributing. I am contributing with students, with faculty members. Um, We are a teaching institution, we are a college. We need to focus in providing the students all the skills that they need to get that job. Thanks so much, Liz, and I really appreciate your passion and your intensity for supporting our faculty to make those great online learning experiences for our learners. I gotta turn the microphone now over to Mike Avis. Mike, I'm wondering if you can tell us what your role is in the TLX, and what are some of the things that you do to support faculty here at George Brown College? Well, thanks, Nikki. Thanks for the, thanks for the shout out and the introduction. Um, so I am a comms professor. I've been working in the Department of English and Communications for about six or seven years and I moved over to the TLX a couple years ago and I have the great privilege of working with these fine folks here Um, and I sort of found a niche I found an area within the TLX that I find really exciting and interesting and one of the things I really enjoy is working with the community of faculty and learners and teachers here at George Brown I've been teaching for 20 plus years in the classroom and I know what it's like to sort of struggle through finding connections with with people within an institution because sometimes you get spread out and you can't find like-minded folk. So being in the TLX just gives me an opportunity to meet lots of faculty who are doing really interesting things. And one of the things that I really like is trying to connect those faculty together. Um, I did a pilot project uh, using iPads in the comm classroom about five years ago. and. I found just sort of by looking around that there's other faculty doing very similar things, but sometimes it was hard to find them. So 
with that in mind, I'm trying to find out what are the interesting things that are going on around the college, putting people together, building a community of learners, and having faculty kind of work together, brainstorm together to think about innovative ways of teaching. Um, another thing that I'm really passionate about right now is the immersive learning, um, immersive learning that's happening and the experiential learning that's sort of become very, very popular. Uh, I've been doing a lot with VR and AR. I'm thinking about ways that faculty can really uh, enliven their classes and engage their students by think by using new technologies, by having immersive video in their classroom, by having having the students have the ability to go out and do a virtual tour of something right while they're sitting in the in the in the room. Um, so I'm I'm spending a lot of time trying to do that. Mike, sometimes faculty come directly to you and ask for help. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works? Sure. I, I without boring people with a long history, but I was when I did my master's, I was in London, England, and I had my first experience with the smart board, and I just thought it was one of the most amazing teaching tools I'd ever seen, and how you could move things around, and this was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago at least, and once I got my hand on one of those, I thought, wow, what are the things that you can do to engage your students and to help them learn just by using that technology? And as I sort of continued teaching, I continued dabbling and using a lot of these things. And faculty come in to me and they say, you know what, I'm thinking of my students are bored of reading textbooks all the time and they're bored of my PowerPoint slides. What can I do to engage them and to help, help them learn a little bit more in a little bit more of an interesting environment? So they'll come to me and I'll sort of sit down and think about what can we do? What is it, what's out there in the industry that we can, that we can start to use and experiment with? And um, I'm a big risk taker. I'm always willing to, to try something that hasn't been tried before or that I am not really comfortable with. And I think one of the things that I help faculty do is maybe just sort of get around some of the fear of actually doing it in front of a class with no safety net. So maybe what I do is maybe provide a little bit of a safety net for them so that if they want to try something new, I can be there to help them troubleshoot at the moment in the classroom. I'm very happy to go into a classroom with faculty when they're trying something new to give them that support, um, give them some places to be creative, give them some places where I can support them in developing their curriculum and their content. So yeah, I, I think of myself as maybe just a, a bouncing a springboard for faculty to come in and try something new. And besides that, I, I, as I said, I really like to explore. So one of the things that I, the thing that I think I provide at the TLX is just always looking for new and innovative ways to, to teach, um, to engage the students, to make their learning real um, and realistic in what, they're, in what they're trying to do. So I think that's what I, what I offer. Thanks so much, Mike. I know you've established a uh, reputation for yourself at the TLX uh, as a person who, when a faculty member comes forward and says, I'd like to try something new, uh, you're the person who says, I can help you with that. So thanks for being here on our first podcast. Uh, and now I'd like to turn the microphone over to Ian Crane. And Ian, I'm wondering if you could introduce yourself and say a little bit about what your role is in the uh, TLX. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Nikki. I'm an instructional uh, designer at the TLX, and I've been at George Brown for about five and a half years. Uh, my role in the TLX is to help develop online courses. That's sort of the main part of the job. Um, but the job also involves finding new ways to teach um, in, a in a virtual space and working with faculty and departments and uh, designing sort of virtual learning. And uh, it's kind of a broad, it's sort of growing ev every day. What I like about my job right now, particularly, is that it's, it's project-based. And as a result, I'm constantly doing new uh, things. So every term, every year, I'm working with all the different divisions and departments at the school. And I get a chance to work on courses and projects with all kinds of things. Um, I'm working on something fun right now, which is in the robotics area, which is not, not my field at all, but is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it's very nice to work with everybody at George Brown and not just be in one department or working on one thing all the time. So it broadens your horizons. It gets you to be in, interested in many things. And like Michael Avis was saying, I'm also interested in VR and, a, and AR and how, they can be ex um, how their use can be ex expanded here. 
Thanks, Ian. What a great job to have a job where you not only get to contribute your skills, but learn and grow and be challenged as well. Um, Stella, Stella Bastone is also one of our instructional designers. And Stella, Ian mentioned that he helps people, helps faculty develop online courses. And uh, I know that's part of your job, but I'm wondering if you could talk about the parts of your job that maybe would appeal to faculty members who might not want to develop a fully online course, but want to develop their skills in teaching and learning in the online environment. Yeah, that's a good question, Nikki. So there are uh, other things that we instructional designers do um, apart from strictly fully online course design. Uh, so among those things are training on uh, production software like Camtasia. So if faculty want to uh, produce a video of their own and edit, uh, then we do training in that kind of thing and all faculty have access to the institutional license for that. Uh, another thing uh, that we do is promote open educational resources and we're always happy to talk to faculty about, about ways that they can incorporate these resources into their online or face-to-face -face or blended environments um, and also the open pedagogy that goes along with that. And um, another thing I wanted to mention is that we are going to be uh, trying out a new format for PD related to uh, teaching online. So it's going to be moving in the direction of a sort of micro-credential format um, so that rather than it being a full length course of 10 weeks or just a micro session of uh, two hours, it's going to be something in between. So it'll be two week uh, sessions and we're going to be posting uh, the information for that on Cornerstone uh, shortly. That sounds great, and I'm sure people will be really interested in the micro, -creden the micro credentialing component. Uh, thanks, Stella. It's been great to talk to our listening audience about the Teaching and Learning Exchange, which we fondly call the TLX, the work that we do, and we're look for we look forward to working with you all. Have a great day. <laughs>